What up, cappers, gamblers, hunters? What up, salutes? What up, Costa Rican strippers? And what up, mama? It is Thursday, August 3rd, and I'm presently in Miami Dade International Airport. Stop two on a three leg journey to San Jose, Costa Rica. One more stop, and I will be there. I would like to give a special shout out to all the strippers in San Jose who have been using the body wash that I sent down. It is imperative to keep washing right up until the last minute, right up until the bag gets there. I know you're here, the bag will be here today, and maybe you stop washing. But it's imperative to continue washing. Let's get to today's action. I know that I've been being beaten up by the baseball gods. It's only August 3rd, and even the little boy behind me knows that I'm being missed. I'm going to stop missing, and as these two boys are my witness, I will win today. Let's get to today's action. First off, I'm keying three games to the Cardinals. The Cardinals are tied 1-1 right now against the Brewers, and I need them to come through with a victory. I got the Cardinals on the road over the Brewers at minus 140. It's Michael Waka versus Matt Garza. On the road, Waka has only got a 5.49 ERA and a 1.45 whip, but those lines are skewed because it got lit up for 11 earned runs in 10 and a third innings over two starts at Wrigley this year. His overall record is 8 and 4 with a 3.71 ERA and a 1.28 whip. He's been pitching very good. Now, he only made it through four innings today. He had a high pitch count. We brought in Voigt to pinch hit with one out, runners on the corners, and Voigt promptly grounded to a double play. Voigt is dead to me. Waka, though, had a lot of hope in this outing. He'd held Arizona scoreless last out over six innings, only allowing three hits. He hasn't allowed an earned run in three of his past five starts. He's been touched by the Brewers this year in two outings, allowing eight earned runs over ten innings, but he only allowed one run, but only made it through four innings today, which is very disappointing. Going up against Matt Garza, who's four and five, with a 3.81 ERA and 1.26 whip. It's Garza's first start since a DL stint due to a strained right calf muscle. I don't understand how Garza is pitching well this year. He's been getting worse and worse and worse every single year, and somehow he stepped up this year. His pitch velocity has gone down every year since 2011. This year, his average is 92.4. That's the lowest of his career. Listen to his win probability added. It's WPA. In 2015, it was minus 1.80. In 2016, it was 0.95. And then this year, somehow it's plus 0.46. How is that possible? In 2015, batted balls that had hard contact against them were 33%. This year, it's 33.1%. So how in the world is he getting through games easier this year than the last two years? I think it's luck, but he's pitching well today, so I'm wrong. I'm going to key that to three different games. First off, the Orioles at home over the Tigers at minus 135 is Chris Tillman versus Matthew Boyd. Tillman is 1-6 with a 7.65 ERA and a 1.98 whip. At home, his numbers are a little better. 5.20 ERA and 1.67 whip. First the Tigers, he's 6-0 with a 2.45 ERA in 9 starts. His velocity is down 1.8 miles per hour since last year. That's part of the problem. He's allowed a lot of hard contact. In 2015, hard contact on batted balls were 26.9% time. In 2016, it was 31.5%. This year, it's 35.5% of the time. He was supposed to be the O's number one starter this year. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened, but I believe in him. He's going up against Matt Boyd, 5-5, five 5.30 five, ERA, and 1.62 whip. He's looked good in three starts since being called up from the minors, going at least six innings in each, allowing three earned runs in each. He has had an exit velocity of 81.8 miles per hour in those three starts. That is tied for second lowest among starters, who's generated at least 50 batted balls in July. July, the first place in that, of course, is the great Clayton Kershaw. Now, Boyd got lit up by Baltimore earlier this year. That's part of the reason why his numbers are so bad. He got lit up for seven runs over two and a third. The Tigers' bullpen is being held up with duct tape and will start showing cracks. The O's have won five straight Passengers and will Astros make it six. Intentional. Next up, I'm keeping the Cardinals to the Astros at home over the race at minus 145. Is Colin McHugh versus Blake Snell. This will be his third start of the year after missing the first 96 games with an elbow injury. He's been gradually building his endurance. Looked great last start in Detroit. Six innings, 82 pitches, one earned run, seven Ks, one walk. A.J. Hinch says he's moved past any restrictions. 
Also, McHugh is unbeaten over his last 11 starts dating back to last season. The Astros have lost two straight versus the Rays, were shut out last night. Their offense has not looked good since losing Korea and Springer, but I believe they will come out and bat the ball around today. They're going up against Blake Snell, who's 0-6, 4.87 ERA, 1.55 whip. He is pitching much better than those numbers indicate. He's allowed, he hasn't allowed more than three earned runs in any of his last four starts, and he was tied with Matt Boyd for second lowest exit velocity in July. Okay, so that's the second game. I know that uh, I just gave a lot of information why the Rays will play well today, but I do believe the Astros will take care of business at home, and I'm getting a really nice number, minus 145. So the third game I will be tying the Cardinals to is the Royals at home over the Mariners at minus 135. It's Trevor Cahill versus Giovanni Gallardo. Cahill is 4-3 with a 4.15 ERA, 1.42 whip. It will be his second start for, for the Royals, and he will be making his home debut. He will want to make those fans proud. His heart will be pumping through his chest. I believe that Cahill will get back to his winning ways today. He got roughed up in his first start for the Royals in Fenway Park, allowing five earned runs in four innings. KC is in the midst of a three-game losing streak. It's their first three-game losing streak in about a month and a half. They've only scored three runs over that span. I think they're very happy to be leaving Baltimore and to be coming home. They will have Lorenzo Cain back in the lineup. Yes, I'm taking two teams, the Royals and the Astros, who've been battling offensive issues over the last few days. I believe both teams will break out. Giovanni Gallardo, I fade every five days. I know he made me look bad last outing against the Mets, but I fade him every chance I get. He's 5-7 and seven with a 5.34 ERA and 1.47 whip. He's been pitching much better of late. Looked good against the Mets, five hits, one earned run. He's 1-0 and oh with a 3.38 ERA and two starts since rejoining the starting rotation, but I don't believe in Giovanni Gallardo. I think he's going to get lit up, touched, felt, slapped, and dealt with. I got three two-game parlays. Now, if something goes wrong in this Cardinals game, I may keep Kluber and the Indians. I may do it. But right now, I'm just going to stick with everything that's going on. So I got a $125 parlay, St. Louis, Baltimore at plus 198. A $125 parlay, St. Louis, Houston at plus 185. And a $125 parlay, St. Louis, Kansas City Royals at plus 203. That is my action. And we are on our way to San Jose, Costa Rica. How do you guys think I'm going to do? You think I'm going to make that money? Am I going to get that cash? Okay. okay. There is a good vibe. There is a good vibe. Miami Dade International Airport. The bag is in route. On route A. To San Jose, Costa Rica. Remember, ladies, wash up. Wow. Let me know what you're hitting today. At Jimmy the Bag on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check us out at JimmyTheBag.com. Let's get that cash.